Amen. Revelation chapter 3. Let's honor the Lord by standing for the reading of his word. Amen. Revelation chapter 3. I want to read a couple of passages to you, and then we'll get right into it. I've got a few things on my heart I want to share with you from the word, and then I want to have a time of prayer and supplication where we call on the name of the Lord. How many believe that there's power in the name of Jesus? Just as he sang this morning, there is power in his name. I guess you're wondering why the keys are up there, right? Well, that's what I'm preaching on, uh, the keys, or the key, rather. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, the church of Philadelphia, verse 7. John the Revelator, he's on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, there isn't a 7-Eleven on every corner. McDonald's hadn't been invented yet. He's been put out there to die. He's been put out there to die a martyr's death because he proclaimed the name of Jesus. Now, God had a plan for his life, and in Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says that John declared, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And he was in the Spirit, and guess what? He couldn't stand up. And he saw a vision. God granted him the ability to see into the future, but he also had a message for seven churches of Asia Minor. These were seven literal churches that represent periods of time throughout history of the church, all right? And I believe that Philadelphia represents us today, the day we're living right now. So this is important. Verse 7, Revelation chapter 3. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David. Everybody say key of David. He that opens and no man shuts, he that shuts and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Everybody say open door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. And look at verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Notice he says, I will keep you out of, away from the coming judgment that shall come upon the earth. And we see chapter 4, that judgment begins. Lord, bless your word today. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Help us to understand the key of David right here today in this place. And help us to understand that you've granted us authority in the name of Jesus. Everybody shout aloud, amen. amen. Be seated if you would. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. So honored to have you. It's an honor to be able to do these family services. I love them because the children are up here, and I know it's, you know, parents, you have to make them mind and all that, but that's good training. Uh, it's good training for reigning. Amen? Amen? And we do have rooms that if you need to apply the uh, uh, Board of Education to the seat of understanding so they get a revelation of who you are, you may do that. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. The key of David. Everybody shout it. The key of David. The key of David. What is the key of David? That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, keys represent authority. It represents uh, access into something or access over something, authority over something. Jesus is the key of David. He holds the key of David in that he has the authority over the evil one. How many realize that we are in a battle? Amen. We are in a battle for our lives, aren't we? Well, we're in a battle for our family's lives, our spouse, our children. Uh, the enemy is on the attack, isn't he? Uh, in fact, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in high places. Listen, there are rankings of demonic spirits. Number one, the devil is real. And number two, the devil's not in hell. He's not sitting in hell around a throne of fire holding a pitchfork. The devil is in the spirit world that you and I cannot see into. There's a spirit world all around us, you see. There's three heavens. The third heaven is where God is. Paul said, I was called up into the third heaven, and I saw things I can't even talk about. I can't even explain how beautiful they are. You know, I often wondered, Paul, what did you see? What did you hear? What was there up there that was so magnificent that you can't even talk about it? Second heaven is the spirit world. First heaven is what we see, what we view with our eyes, the constellation, stars, sun, moon, galaxy. Second heaven is the spirit world. Ephesians 2.2 2 says that he is the prince of the power of the air. That air is the firmament. That's the spirit world. 
Now, you can't see a demonic spirit, or perhaps maybe you've uh, had the ability to look into the spirit world, see angels and uh, demonic forces, but I don't believe that because if you could, you, you wouldn't be able to handle something like that. Secondly, demonic spirits don't have form. They possess and oppress bodies and people, but they don't have a physical form. They are a spirit being, and they are very much real, and they are very much real around you. When you feel depressed or oppressed or maybe the spirit of fear comes upon you, you get a bad doctor's report or something like that, you're, you're, you're suddenly feeling that fear and anxiety. That, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a spirit. And the Bible says that he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound, whole, wholesome mind. Shout, I have it. Amen. But you're fighting against principalities and powers. I told the crowd Wednesday night, when you're battling somebody verbally, whether it's your spouse or the boss or whoever, you're not fighting them, you're fighting the devil. He speaks through people. Somebody doesn't have to be possessed with a demonic spirit in order for the enemy to speak through them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, the spirit of addiction, the spirit of suicide, uh, the spirit of anxiety, depression, uh, oppression, uh, the, the, the spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. That doesn't mean that when you're sick in body, that doesn't always mean you're possessed or oppressed by a devil, but it could. It could because there is a spirit of infirmity, right? But whether it's a spirit of infirmity or just your physical body, guess what? He's still the Lord that healeth thee. You believe that? Shout Amen. Either way, he can take care of it. But I want us to talk about the, the spirit world for just a moment. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, principalities and powers. Jesus said, I have given unto you, that's you and I, the key of David. The key of David, the Davidic covenant. David was the what king of Israel? Second king of Israel, right? Number two, who was the first one? Saul. David was the second king. David, God raised him up. And he says, I will make sure that your royal lineage will continue forever. Amen. And for four centuries after King David died, the king that was raised up next was a descendant of King David. Some of them were good. Some of them were not so good. But anyway, they were the lineage of David. Eventually, the Babylonians came and took captive the Israelites, and they didn't have a king anymore. And then the king was born from the lineage of David, right? Who is that king? That is Jesus, right? He wasn't crowned with gold and pearls, but he was crowned with a crown of thorns, and he became the king of the Jews, right? And one day he's coming back to rule and reign as king of kings and lord of lords, to reign over the kingdom. You see, the kingdom isn't now. The kingdom of God is in your heart. Luke's gospel tells us, right? What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the way God does things. The kingdom of God is the way Jesus does things. How did he do it when he walked this earth? And the kingdom of God now is how he does things through you by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 That's the kingdom of God. Because Satan is the God of this world's system. Uh -huh. Not the planet, the world's system. Dog eat dog, I'm coming after you. And everybody sings the old too familiar hymn, right? The original hymn. It's all about me. Forget about you. It's all about me. Me and not about you. Amen. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> Amen. I'm waiting. I'm <laughs> I'm just waiting for God to give me that voice where I could sing to him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So by faith, I sing every now and then to see if I'm getting it, right? I'm stepping out by faith. So anyway, that, he is the God of this world system, the cosmos, all right? Because the earth is the Lord, Psalm 24, verse 1, and the fullness thereof. He owns this planet. Uh -huh. Amen. He's in control of what happens with this planet, right? And he's in control of your life when you surrender to him. But there is a spirit world, the key of David. When we think about the lineage of kingship of King David, Christ born, died, resurrected. Now, through his resurrection, all right, he now has authority over the enemy. The seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15, will crush the head of the serpent. We see that in the very beginning, right? And that seed, the bloodline, through David, King David, to Jesus Christ. So now Christ is and has the key of David. But here's the good news. You ready? 
Here's the good news. Well, let me tell you this good news first. He did die, and he died for you, and he died for me. Do you realize that when he was hanging on the cross, he saw every sin that you would ever commit, and he died for you. He saw it. We've seen some of the, the worst mass murderers of, of human history, as we know it in our time, Ted Bundy and, and what's the other guy, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, both of them confessing Christ while they were in jail. Now, do you think that the Lord would allow somebody like that to be in his presence after what they did? Absolutely. If anybody calls on the name of the Lord by faith, when Christ hung suspended between heaven and earth, he died for everybody, the whole world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And anybody that calls upon the name of the Lord shall, might be, I don't know, they could be, maybe, no, they shall be saved. And Jesus said in Revelation 1.18, he says, Behold, I am he that lived and was dead. But behold, I am alive forevermore. They put him in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. They covered him up and, and put him in there nice and neat. But three days later, he kicked out the borrowed tomb. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, which is a place of complete and ultimate authority. At the right hand of God. And what's interesting about that, in Acts chapter 7, when Stephen is being stoned to death, the first Christian martyr, when he's being stoned to death, the Bible says that he looked up into heaven and he saw Jesus standing, not sitting, standing at the right hand of the Father. What does that mean for you and I? Well, when the high priest would stand, the only time they would stand is when they were interceding on behalf of the people. Now, I don't know about you, but that excites me because when I take my last breath, I fully believe I'm going to see the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father because when he looks upon us, he sees sinful, dirty, rotten rags of flesh. But when he looks at you, when you place faith in Christ, guess what he sees? the nail-scarred hands, the prints in his ankles, the, the scar in his ribbon side, the, the scars on his forehead from the crown of thorns, and he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. So now, now, go to Matthew 16. Let's go there. Boy, I love this. The key of David. The key of David is authority. And Jesus said, the good news, before he ascended to heaven, in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. <laughs> all power. And he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, yeah. teaching them to observe all things, whatever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always. Amen. That's why one brother never flies in an airplane, because the Bible says, lo, I am with you always. Amen. 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 And then Pastor Silas got up here this morning, and he read the Great Commission from Mark's Gospel, and he said, we'd lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Speak with new tongues. Take up serpents. That doesn't mean snake can't. You better not ever bring a snake in this place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That means trampling on serpents and scorpions spiritually because spiritually he's a snake and all those angels that fell with him, they're snakes too. Oh. Amen. Amen. And they're out to sting, bite, and hurt and manipulate. But we have authority over yes, to take up serpents. Amen. Yes. And the Lord working for them. No. Well, do it, God. Just do it. No, he wants you to do it. Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Why? Because he's given you the key. Amen. The key of David. Come on. Amen. He's delegated that authority to you and I, not to sit on a pew to check off a list for the week that we went to church. No, church begins when you leave here. Amen. Church begins when you leave here. You come here to get built up full of the Holy Ghost. And then you go out there and you evangelize. Amen. And you take the key of David and unlock the passage of which he's given you to lay hands on the sick. Amen. 
Amen. Pray in the Spirit. Recovering of sight to the blind. Matthew 16. I love this passage. Look at verse 13. This is Peter's confession. Now, the Catholic religion is doctrine of the Pope, the representation of Jesus in the earth. Cardinals and priests are, a lot of it is based on this text. Not all of it, but a lot of it. But I want to clear something up. I want you to see something that the Lord gave me. Verse 13, Matthew 16. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said unto them, But who do you say that I am? That's the question this morning. Who do you say that he is? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He was given a divine revelation from God. And I say unto you that thou art Peter, Petrus, the rock. And upon this rock, now Catholic Church says that's Peter. And that he's the first pope, and all the popes in succession of him is that rock, see. Now, when Jesus is responding to Peter's revelation, he is in no way saying, upon you, Peter. Here's what I think he did. You ready? I think he was looking at them. See, the Bible doesn't record every detail. I believe he was looking at them. And he says, Peter, upon this rock, Uh oh, hallelujah, I will build my church. Jesus is that rock. He is the stone that the builders rejected, you see. And Peter tells us that in his epistle. I believe Jesus was pointing at himself and said, upon this rock, the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord, I will build my church. And I like the next part. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys. Not the key. (laughs) Keys, plural. Who's got a set of keys on you? Just jangle those things. Let's hear it. Come on. There we go. Keys. I worked so hard trying to find a big key ring with a bunch of keys. I was going to shake that thing the whole time. Could for the life of me find something like that. But he says, I have given unto you the keys of the kingdom, plural. The kingdom of heaven. Remember the kingdom? Christ is our king, right? Christ is our king. We are ambassadors of his kingdom. Which means we represent him, right? We represent the king in our service to him, rendering service to this world under the authority, the key of David, the king, Jesus Christ. And he has given us Keys, plural. Then look what he says. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That word bind, highlight it. In the Greek, it actually means to forbid. Uh Uh-oh. When was the last time you just told the devil no? When he starts messing with your mind again? Huh? He brings Egypt back into your life? And that old thought that you thought you've gotten rid of, it comes seeping back in. Huh? When God healed your body, but you start feeling that pain again. Huh? When was the last time you told him, no? My wife gave me a good revelation one day. She says, he can't read my mind, the devil. Mm -hmm. But he can hear what I'm saying. Amen. 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 He can hear what comes out of your mouth. But guess what you have? You have authority over him to say no. Because whatever you bind, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper or unlawful is bound in heaven. What heaven? The second heaven. The heavenly places. 
God help me today. Because Ephesians 1, 3 says that we dwell in heavenly places with Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And if you understand today that you have the key of David, which is the authority to work on behalf of, <clears throat> on behalf of Christ, who is your king, and now he has given you the keys of the kingdom, you can bind. You can bind devils. Bind demonic spirits. And you can loose people. God help me today. Binding devils, loosing people. I believe that today. I believe we have authority over sickness and disease. Oh, yes, I do. I believe that we have authority over the spirit of suicide. I just drive that out of your life today. I believe we have uh, authority over the spirit of depression. I just drive that out of your life today. I bind that devil. Oh, God. Just raise your hands and begin to honor him in this place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you in this place today. We bless you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we honor your presence. You are the main personality in our lives. Ah, hallelujah. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Everybody say, I have the keys. I have the keys. And you have them. Amen. The delegated authority to operate within the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's in you and it's of you. Amen. And he's with you. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 3. Turn over there quickly. Mark 3. Now I am a big proponent of point of contact. What I mean by that, now I know we can pray for people and we can send the word and they can be healed. I believe we can, there are times when we can do what that centurion, when he said to Jesus, all you have to do is speak the word and my servant will be made whole. I believe we can do that at times, but I am a big believer in the point of contact because I believe that the anointing of God is tangible, that you can grab a hold of it and you can feel it. Amen? That's why I believe the Apostle Paul, the Bible says special miracles were wrought by him because he would take his clothes and cut them up and send them to people who were possessed with devils, oppressed sick in their bodies, and that when they would come in contact with that piece of clothing, God would heal them. Now, where, when did he ever quit doing that? The answer is that he did not. I don't care what some backslidden preacher told you, God still performs miracles today. And when you can get a hold of that and believe that and understand you have the keys and the authority over the principalities and powers, you can walk in victory. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon all the powers of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm you. I still believe that. Take authority over your children's lives. When they're not in their bedroom, go in there and lay on that bed and say, God, let your anointing touch their lives. Oh. Mark 3, verse 27. You ready? You sure? No man, Jesus said, you or I, can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man. Uh-oh, there's that word again. How can you take it back when you can't even go to him? Uh-oh. See, if I could bind him in California, I'd just bind him in the whole world, wouldn't you? If we could do that. That's why I believe in contact. That's why it's important that you be in God's house if you can be here. Because we can make a point. Pray for me, Pastor. Get here so I can lay my hands on you. Amen. 
because the point of contact is so important. Amen? Don't watch by Facebook. Great God in heaven. It's just not the same as being in the tangible presence of Almighty God. This, you're probably wondering why I'm holding this. Our sister here has, they begin making these, and we're giving them to people who are sick in their body. Or pre- this is for your baby niece, is that right? Amen. Granddaughter, I'm sorry. How old is she? One. And she's suffering with sending her to Brenner's because of her heart. Now, this is going to come in t- contact with that little baby, and we're going to believe God to perform a miracle. Now, somebody would say, don't give them false hope. Well, I'm going to give them some kind of hope. Amen? Amen. Because I believe in this tangible anointing. And we're going to go pray for Cherie as well. Amen? Amen. That baby's got a tumor in its its brain. But we're going to go to the hospital and we're going to believe God, aren't we? He's going to go with me. And we're going to believe God to dissolve that thing. Come on. Because you can't bind the strong man until you go into his house first. Go to where he is and say, no, get out, dissolve, because you have the key of David. You have the keys of the kingdom. You have authority to do that. And when you get that revelation and understand that, oh God, it will change your life. And I believe God's going to heal you today. Suffering with that toothache, we bind that thing. They're going to pull that thing, but I'm going to believe God to heal it before they pull it. Well, I've got about 10 that believe with me, but we're going to pray for you and believe God to do it. Amen? Hold on a minute. So, you can't spoil his goods, except you first bind him, declare it what? Unlawful, forbid it, say no. Amen. And then he will spoil his house. (laughs) Oh, because they were accusing Jesus of casting out devils in the name of the devil, in the name of Beelzebub. And he says, how could I do that? A house against itself is divided. Why would a devil cast out a devil? They called him a devil is what they did. And he says, you blaspheme the power of the Holy Spirit because Jesus was operating in the power of the Spirit. And he said, that manner of blaspheming will not be forgiven. How can I go into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, number one, unless I'm stronger than he is, and number two, unless I bind and declare it unlawful? Good God. This is good today. All right. Acts chapter 4. Turn over there quickly. I'm going to close with this. Listen. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times I give altar invitations and I know that's old-fashioned but let me tell you this is where the church was birthed in the altar this is a place of sacrifice this is a place of a point of contact where somebody can agree with you to believe God to do something miraculous come on amen and we're gonna believe him to do it so when I give these invitations don't stand there Like I've got three heads, and you don't understand what I'm saying. When will you get to the point you don't care what people think? Because when you get to that point, that's when the Lord's going to recognize you. You'll be like the woman with the issue of blood just pressing her way through the crowd, saying, I've just got to, you think she cared what people thought? She wasn't even supposed to be among people. But she says, I've got to get to him. And when she did, the virtue, the tangible anointing went out of his body and healed her body. Because he, and and another point there, there were a hundred people touching him. But then he says, who touched me? And his disciples said, there's a hundred people touching you. He says, oh, I felt something that time. Amen. When you finally get to him, (laughs) when you want him more than you want your program on television, when you know more about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John than the Kardashians, and you want to get a hold of God, you will get a hold of God. Acts chapter 4. Now, Peter... 
Peter, who was a coward, that's what he was, he cussed out a little girl by the fire and said, I don't know who he is. Quit talking to me. Three times he denied Christ. And the Bible says he followed him afar off. Think about that. Who's following him afar off today? And then on the day of Pentecost, after Christ resurrected, after he ascends to heaven, he says, Terry, wait in Jerusalem until I send the promise of the Father, which was the gift of The gift of the Holy Ghost, the third person. Let me help you with the Trinity. You ready? God wills it. Jesus does it. The Holy Spirit manifests it. He's the most important person in your life. The Holy Spirit. Not the Father. Not Jesus. The Holy Ghost. Jesus is still a man. He's still sitting at the right hand of the Father. God the glory of God, and he sent the Holy Spirit, the promise, to be with you and I. Amen. So, so God wills that all men be saved. Jesus saved us. The Holy Spirit manifests it when he convicts us. God wills that you be healed in your body. Jesus did it with those stripes. He took your sickness upon his body. But the Holy Ghost, the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead also quickens our mortal body. So Peter, who, who Jesus said earlier, I give you the keys of the kingdom. In Acts chapter 3, after Pentecost, he speaks with tongues. The Holy Ghost comes upon him, and he stands up with the eleven. And he says, men and women, they're not drunk like you suppose. They were drunk. They were staggering and slurring. I want to see somebody stagger under the Holy Ghost, kind of like you did. Boy, no better feeling, is it? Better than being drunk and high and all that other stuff. Better than any meal you could partake in. It's the power of God. And it's not a figment of your imagination. It's a reality. Amen. And he says, they're not drunk as you suppose, for it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit, saith God. Amen. So in chapter 3, he exercises those keys. And he comes to the temple for the hour of prayer. Uh-oh. He prayed an hour? Sure did. He comes for the hour of prayer. And he sees a beggar there. Now, mind you, Jesus went into this temple almost daily when he was on this earth. How many times do you think he walked by that man and never healed him? Because he knew one day he wanted to show Peter and John how to exercise their authority and use the keys that he had given them to bind and loose. Is that what he told Peter? So... Peter and John fasten their eyes upon him in Acts chapter 3, and they say, and he's begging for money, and he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. And he grabbed him by the arm and said, rise up and walk. And the Bible says the man who was there for so many years jumped to his feet. He walked and he leaped, praising God in the temple. <laughs> because they took authority over that thing. Now the church, the religious crowd, didn't like that too much. Just like communities years ago didn't like it when the Pentecostal church came to town. Snarled up their noses, said, there's those holy rollers, there's those Pentecostals. When I talk to it, when, when, when the ignorance of people are revealed, and I say, I'm, I'm a Pentecostal preacher, you handle snakes? <laughs> really? Amen. <laughs> My in-laws said that to me, didn't they? <laughs> Amen. He's probably watching right now. I love you, Dave. Amen. He watches me. I know he does. So, the religious folks got mad, and they put hands on them in chapter 4, brought them before the council, 
the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and wanted to condemn them, put them in jail. And listen, chapter 4, look at verse number 5, because I want, to see, I want to show you the keys that Peter used when this happened to this lame man, all right? I want us to see it. The, number one, the key of David is the authority that you have in Christ. Number two, he gives you the keys, plural, the gifts of the Spirit, salvation, sanctification, spirit baptism, amen? He gives you that authority. Those are the keys, plural, but look, let's look at it. Excuse me, verse 5 of Acts 4. And it came to pass on the morn, morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest. Now, <laughs> it wasn't too long before this, Jesus was standing before these same people. You to get that in your mind. And as many were of the kindred of the faith, or the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Now, I believe they were ready to answer that question. <laughs> because I'm sure Peter's thinking, Well, the guy you killed? Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. That's key number one. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Not I've got the Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. All right. Said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name, you sung about it earlier, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, Pilate, Caiaphas, whom God raised from the dead, now they're getting nervous. Even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone, the rock. Not the Pope, the rock Jesus. This is the rock. Set it not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there, this is the key. If you're watching by internet, listening by podcast in this building today, this is the key. It's all about that cross right there. Neither is there salvation in any other, nor is there any other name under heaven <laughs> given among men whereby we must be saved. Let me, and 5,000 people came to Jesus Christ because of that. And that's him confirming his word with signs following. How wonderful would it be for you to go to your family and people on the job who says God isn't real. You really believe all that stuff for him to heal your body. And you go say, let me tell you who did it. It's the one you've rejected. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he shall save your family. If you believe it, shout aloud. Amen. Stay to your feet. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jonathan Seth's got it today. He's going to play something. Listen to me. <clears throat> Amber, come on up. We're going to pray for Cherie's baby. We're just going to believe God to infuse us with an anointing to go there and lay hands on him. Debbie, come on up here. Anybody else? Listen. Tandy, come up here. Where you at? We're going to believe God to heal you today. The Lord just spoke that to me right then. I don't even know what you're dealing with. What's going on with you, Tandy? Yeah. We're going to believe God. If you're here today, listen. We're going to bind the strong man. Maybe it's depression, oppression, anxiety, fear, I don't know. Spirit of suicide will drive that thing out of your life today. And we'll agree with God. 
Maybe, maybe it's a marital situation. Maybe your spouse is acting goofy. Well, we're going to take authority over that right now. Amen. Amen. And we're going to believe God that, uh, that what he's put together, no devil is going to pull it apart. Amen. Amen. No devil will pull it apart because you have authority. If that's you, if, if you've got sickness in your body, if you're struggling in your mind, if you want to come back to Jesus, listen to me. Maybe you're following him afar off. If you're listening by internet watching, everybody stretch your hand toward the camera there. If you're watching, the Lord wants to touch you today. Wherever you are, simply call on the name of the Lord by faith. Confess your sin. Jesus is faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And I believe today you will be healed, body, soul, and spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen.